Despite being one of the most extensively studied civilizations in human history, ancient Egypt still holds a plethora of mysteries that remain unsolved. These enigmas have left scientists and researchers shaken as they grapple with the unknown and fear they may never unearth the truth. Despite the immense knowledge we've acquired about this culture and country, there are still untold secrets that lurk beneath the surface, waiting to be uncovered. Let's take a closer look. The ancient Egyptian pyramids near Giza continue to fascinate archaeologists and historians to this day. However, one of the biggest mysteries of this civilization remains the two obscure and incomplete pyramids located in the town of Zayat el Aryan. Believed to have been built during the Third Dynasty between 2700 and 2600 BCE, the Layer Pyramid and the Unfinished Northern Pyramid are shrouded in secrecy and intrigue. The Layer Pyramid is thought to have been built by Pharaoh Kaba and was excavated in the early 20th century. Nearby, several large mastabas were found, which would have been the dwellings of high officials. This suggests that the area held great royal significance. The unfinished northern pyramid is also known as the Pyramid of Baca or the Pyramid of Bicaris. Egyptologists have been debating its ownership for decades, with some attributing it to a king named Bicaris and others to a prince named Baca. Unfortunately, the pyramids have remained largely untouched since their discovery. A nearby military base has restricted access to the area, leaving the remains in a state of disrepair and a wealth of knowledge still waiting to be unearthed. After a two-year hiatus due to the events of 2020 and 2021, a team of Dutch and Italian archaeologists returned to Saqqara in early 2023 and uncovered an incredible underground tomb complex along with several chapels. Led by Christian Greco and Laura Weiss, the team's goal is to better understand the history of the Saqqara necropolis, one of the most important sites in all of ancient Egypt. The recently discovered tomb complex was built for Panacee, a steward of the Temple of Amun during the reign of Ramses II. The structure resembles a freestanding temple and features several chapels offering a glimpse into the religious life of ancient Egyptians. The team also found four smaller chapels in the area with well-preserved funeral scenes and drawings. One of the most impressive chapels was built for Yo-Yo, a maker of gold foil for the pharaoh's treasury. The quality and detail of the wall decorations are stunning, featuring colorful portrayals of funeral processions, veneration for the goddess Hathor, and the ship of the local Sakura god Sakar. As this is an April 2023 discovery, research is still ongoing. Our next puzzling ancient Egyptian find is the magnificent Geyer Anderson Cat, a bronze statue that dates back to the late period around 600 BCE. This feline sculpture stands 16 inches high and is adorned with exquisite gold ornaments and jewelry, including a protective wedget amulet. It's a representation of the female cat deity Bastet, with a scarab on its head and a winged scarab on its chest. The Geyer Anderson cat is a true work of art, but the statue's beauty hides a dark secret. It's not as well preserved as it seems. X-rays taken of the sculpture reveal cracks almost completely around the center of the cat's body, and only an internal system of reinforcements prevents its head from falling off. Luckily, Major Geyer Anderson, who donated the statue to the British Museum, was an expert restorer. It was he who added the reinforcements in the 1930s. He also chipped away a heavy coating of verdigris and red patina to reveal the cat's true beauty. The Geyer Anderson cat is a stunning example of ancient Egyptian art and craftsmanship and a testament to the skill and talent of its creators. Osiris ought not to have a tomb, he is after all a deity rather than a king. That didn't stop rumors of the discovery of the so-called Tomb of Osiris circulating in Egypt and the wider world in May 2015. The rumors focused on a 3,200-year-old tomb that was found in Sheikh Abd al Gorna which is a necropolis on the west bank of the Thebes. It's an enormous tomb, but contains no inscriptions. However, it does contain a massive transversal hall supported by five pillars and a staircase that descends into bedrock to reach a complex dedicated to the legend of Osiris. Egyptian mythology states that Osiris was the first pharaoh of Egypt and ruled until he was betrayed and killed by his brother Seth, 
who locked him into a box and filled it with molten lead before throwing the box into the Nile. Not content with that, he reincarnated as a crocodile, tore the body into 14 pieces, and spread them across Egypt. Isis, the wife of Osiris, later recovered all the pieces and buried them where she found them, creating a shrine in each place. This is undoubtedly a shrine to Osiris, but was part of him buried here? Almost certainly not, but it's strange that the tomb can't otherwise be identified. The Hekinoct Papyri, also known as the Hekinoct Letters, is a collection of papyri that date back to the early Middle Kingdom of ancient Egypt, around 4,000 years ago. These precious texts were discovered in the tomb complex of Vizier Ippi and were accidentally mixed into debris used to push the coffin of a servant named Mesa into the burial chamber. The papyri consist of letters and accounts written on or on behalf of Hekinok, a Ka priest of Ippi. They provide rare and valuable information about the lives of ordinary members of the lower upper class of Egypt during this period. The papers give insight into the monetary system of the time, in which rent and taxes were typically paid to pharaoh in grain. Hekinok calculated values in grain, particularly barley, but also had no problem converting these values into equivalent amounts of oil, textiles, or copper. He both expected and offered payments in different commodities. These papyri are significant not only to the study of ancient economic thought and accountancy, but also to the history of Egyptian fractions and mathematical techniques. The use of double-entry accounting in theoretical or abstract weights and measures units shows the sophistication of the Egyptian economy during this time. The Temple of Amun at Kawa in Nubia once housed at least three magnificent statues of Amun, represented in the form of a ram protecting King Tarhaka the pharaoh who began construction of the stone temple in 683 BCE. Amun was one of the most significant deities in ancient Egypt, and the ram was one of his sacred animals. Statues of rams or ram-headed sphinxes have often been found in various temples dedicated to Amun. The rams were discovered by Professor Francis Llewellyn Griffith during his excavations at the temple in 1930-1931. One of those statues was acquired by the British Museum directly from Professor Griffith in 1933 and is still there today. The British Museum state features a ram lying on its stomach with its forelegs folded under it, protecting a standing figure of King Taharka. The ram's head has a hole indicating where a gilded disc would have originally fitted, while a hieroglyphic inscription on the plinth proclaims Taharka as the son of Amun and Mut. The Archmolian Museum in Oxford, England holds the paired ram to the British Museum statue, and a third statue is displayed at the National Museum of Sudan in Cardua. In a late 2022 discovery, archaeologists unearthed a trove of about 20 ancient burials in the coastal city of New Damietta, Egypt. The burials, which date back to the 26th dynasty of around 2600 years ago, are a window into a time when Egypt struggled to maintain its independence from foreign rulers, and its capital was located in the Nile Delta. Gold foil grave goods were discovered among the remains, fashioned into the shape of a revered Egyptian deity such as Isis, known for her magical healing powers, the feline protector Bastet, and the hawk-headed god Horus. These gold idols are believed to have been used to provide protection to the deceased in the afterlife and elevate their status to that of a god. It's quite clear in contemporary religious texts that the Egyptian gods were thought to have flesh of gold, according to Egyptologist Campbell Price, who led the team responsible for the discovery. In addition to the idols, the team also discovered scarab amulets, a symbol of rejuvenation in ancient Egypt, and canopic jars that were used to preserve organs. Despite the many finds, much remains a mystery about these ancient individuals, including their identities. The Magnificent Gilded Coffin of Ned Jamek, an ancient Egyptian priest of the ram god Hereshaf, was acquired by the New York City Metropolitan Museum of Art in 2017, with plans to showcase it in an exhibition. However, in 2019, before the exhibit's closure, the museum repatriated the coffin and the remains of the priest back to Egypt. 
The elaborate coffin made of a combination of materials such as cartonage, paint, gold, silver, resin, glass, wood, and leaded bronze is 72 inches long, 20 inches wide, and 11 inches deep. The lid is covered with vignettes of funerary spells from the Book of the Dead, depicting the weighing of the heart against the ma'at and the mummification process. Inside, the figure of the goddess Newt is partially covered in silver foil. The base of the coffin features a jed pillar hieroglyph symbolizing stability and the backbone of Osiris. Nejimonk's titles as a priest of Hereshef are inscribed on the coffin, indicating his devotion to his role. Before the repatriation, the coffin's provenance was disputed, with forged documents claiming it had been exported in 1971 with permission from the Antiquities Organization and it belonged to Habib Tawadris, an art dealer in Cairo. A subsequent investigation led to charges against art dealer Christoph Kuniki. Crime doesn't always pay. Next up, we have Trajan's Kiosk, a magnificent high pathral temple that has endured for centuries on Akilkia Island, Egypt. Known locally as the Pharaoh's Bed, this one-of-a-kind structure is attributed to Trajan, the Roman emperor who ruled from 98 to 117 CE. However, the majority of the temple structure dates back to an earlier period, possibly to the reign of Augustus. Originally situated on Philae Island, the kiosk was relocated to Agilkia Island in the 1960s as part of the international campaign to save the monuments of Nubia. With its impressive height of 52 feet, the kiosk likely served as a shelter for the bark of Isis at the eastern banks of Philae Island. The kiosk's 20 columns are beautifully decorated with composite capitals, each topped with six-foot-high piers, and were originally intended to be sculpted into best piers, although this decoration was never completed. Its attribution to Emperor Trajan is based on a carving inside the kiosk structure, which depicts the emperor burning incense before Osiris and Isis, showcasing the grandeur of both Roman and Egyptian cultures in a harmonious union. Beni Hassan, an ancient Egyptian cemetery located in the heart of Middle Egypt, is a site of great historical significance. It lies approximately 12 miles to the south of the modern-day city of Minya, in the region between Ashit and Memphis. This cemetery was primarily used during the Middle Kingdom spanning the Middle Bronze Age, although there are some Old Kingdom burials at the site. To the south of the cemetery is a temple dedicated to the local goddess Paket constructed by the famous pharaohs Hatshepsut and Thutmos III. This subterranean temple is known as the Cave of Artemis due to the Greeks' identification of Pocket with Artemis. The cemetery is home to 39 ancient tombs of Middle Kingdom nomarchs who governed from Hebenu in the Oryx Nome, now known as the 16th Nome of Upper Egypt. The elite class of ancient society built large and elaborately decorated tombs, which represented their social and political positions as the rulers and officials of the Oryx Nome. These striking tombs were carved into the limestone cliffs near the provincial capital and are famous for their quality of paintings depicting scenes of daily life and warfare. The Mask of Tutankhamun is a true masterpiece of ancient Egyptian art and one of the most recognizable artifacts in the world. It is a stunningly beautiful gold mask that was placed over the head of Tutankhamun's mummified body, intended to protect and guide him on his journey to the afterlife. The mask is made of solid gold and weighs a staggering 24 pounds with intricate details crafted by skilled artisans. The mask's most notable feature is its striking likeness to the young pharaoh with his youthful and serene features captured in incredible detail. The delicate inlay of precious stones such as lapis lazuli and turquoise makes the mask an even more exquisite piece of art, emphasizing the immense wealth and power of the ancient Egyptian pharaohs. Despite its grandeur and beauty, the mask has had a tumultuous history since its 1922 discovery by Howard Carter, with tales of curses adding to its allure. Today, the mask remains a beloved symbol of ancient Egypt and is one of the most significant artifacts in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, where it draws millions of visitors every year. 
When archaeologists open ancient tombs in Egypt, it's reasonably common for them to find tiny sculptures known as shabti. Hundreds of them have been found. But having so many artifacts to study hasn't helped archaeologists to identify their purpose. They're most commonly said to be symbolic servants of the dead, but that isn't proven. It's a theory that stems from the fact that, based on timelines, Shopti started appearing in the tombs of the Egyptian aristocracy at about the same time as sacrificed human servants stopped appearing in them. Later examples of the artifacts come with inscriptions that have been interpreted as curses or spells, but the older ones are plain. Some Shopti are depicted as carrying tiny tools like hoes, whereas others carry baskets. The etymology of their name isn't understood, with some thinking it comes from sha, as in to command, and others thinking it comes from swib, which means stick. There might be nothing to them beyond the fact that someone thought they were a nice thing to put inside someone's tomb, and the idea caught on. But almost everything in an Egyptian tomb symbolizes something. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.